Asalaamu Alaikum, good afternoon and welcome to another Club 100 video. This time we're at Bayford Meadows for the fifth round of the Sprint Championship. Now, because I went abroad after this race, I haven't had much time to edit it. So I don't have any of the lap times up and positions for each race, with the exception of the A-Finals. And the A-Finals I've kept all together, so I haven't cut it anywhere. It's just a pure race footage. Um, but all of the other heats have all been edited so here we go then our first heat of the day we're starting in second place alongside Michael Preston and we get uh, actually a fairly decent start off the line we have a look to move to the inside but it's covered so I decide you know what let's go all the way around the outside Michael doesn't leave any room as is his right so I decide to Jacksville nerve it and go all the way up on the grass but the inside is covered and as I go around turn two Jack O'Neill's front wheel kind of hooks in onto my rear bumper so it costs us both um, a lot of time, sadly, um, and as a result, Michael pulls away. Now, a little bit later in the race, this is either lap two or lap three. Down the inside, I believe that's Jack O'Neill. No, it's actually Fraser Brunton. At the time, I didn't know who that was. I was just really annoyed that someone decided to go up my inside when I was trying to catch up to, up to the leader. So I decided to send Fraser into the hairpin. Fairly clean move, job done, upper position. Um, but it is Fraser Brunton we're talking about. He's a very, very quick driver. So he will be coming back at us as we go into the long left-hander. Fraser manages to squeeze his nose up the inside. And then going through the right, we give him a little push, which um, I, I spoke to him afterwards and uh, kind of realized what I had done. Because at the time I thought I was right on his rear end, so I didn't see it more of like um, a shunt as like I was just pushing him along through the corner. So that one is probably my bad. Fraser actually got a, a penalty. He got a warning for contact. So I'm not sure where Fraser would have got that one from. Anyway, he comes back past us. He gives a little tap to his head um, and I give him a, another little punterino. So I slowed down to let Fraser go through because that time I knew that it was 100% my fault. But I lose two positions. Now I lose another position. So that, that little touch on Fraser has cost me, well, at least two places, if, if not three. Um, well, two places, because I was behind Fraser anyway. Um, and then going in into this long left-hander. Does someone come up my inside? No, they don't. So we're down into one, two, three, four, five. We're down into P6 after starting in second. Um, so not great. I did have one of my mates, good old Technovin, was watching, and he was saying that uh, I was losing a lot of time coming onto the straight. So I'm not sure if my cart was struggling with pickup or if I just wasn't getting the exits right. Um, kind of looking back at the footage, I think I was losing a bit of time. I don't think it was a, like a bad, bad cut, but maybe it was like two tenths a lap. It was my first session of the day, so maybe I was still kind of getting used to things. I did really find time in the second heat because I was behind uh, Ed Bars and Daz Steel, and um, I was just able to follow them a bit, learn a bit, and catch up to them as I make a bit of contact with whoever this chap is in front of me. Um, we don't gain any positions, and then I get a shunt from behind as. Um, this um, as this man passes me and I think he then slows down to let me through and indeed he does so he kind of recognizes the bump and pass lets me through to avoid himself picking up like a four place penalty anyway a little bit later on in the race the man who bumped and passed me before now sends it up my inside and this time he gets the move off very cleanly we're quite close but he's going to go defensive is he no he's not but I'm not quite brave enough to send him down the inside. To be fair, I think this first race was me kind of getting back to grips with the circuit because Bayford is probably my best track on the calendar. Uh, it's probably my best track in general when it comes to actual pace here. Like, I can match the top guys, but this first heat wasn't the best. And now I believe this is the final lap of the race. So we're coming into the final corner, and sadly for us, this was actually a P7, but we picked up a 4 place penalty for a tap on Fraser Brunton um, I think it was I don't know where um, you'll see it would have appeared on the on the Delta board at some point so I I think I think it was harsh because I, I gave the position back but there you go P11 in the end after finishing P7 on circuit so here we go then for our second heat this is heat 6 and we're starting in P4 and you might be able to tell the issue already we're on the outside and the first two corners here at Bayford are right handers so that makes things a little bit tricky for us. Daz Steele starting on pole, Ed Bars in third, and the guy in front of me doesn't exactly get the best of starts um, to get this race off. So I decide, you know what? To hell with it. I'm going around the outside of all of you. And uh, I decide, uh, or I say I decide, I end up gaining two places, and I'm right onto the back of Ed Bars into 
turn two or turn three, whatever you want to call it. So I would count that as a very good start, considering I managed to hold it around the outside into turn one without getting murdered. Um, I guess some credit has to be given to the other drivers for not killing me um, and just yeeting me off the circuit. But there we go. And then I realized on this first lap how much time I lost out of that corner. And I realized like I was taking, I, I was just taking the corner all wrong. Um, as the race went on, I was trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. And I realized that Ed and Daz were taking much earlier apexes and I was trying to get a later apex lifting off too much into the corner. So not carrying enough corner speed. That being said, I was able to gain on these guys throughout most of the rest of the lap. Um, but later on, so I fell back to about, I want to say two seconds behind these guys, and then I was able to catch up. And I think now I'm heading, we, we're heading onto the final lap of the race. Yes, we are. So the fact that I've been able to stick with these two and they haven't been battling hard is, I'm very happy with that. Um, I did set the fast lap of this session at 55.192. Um, I think that was that was on the lap that I've just completed. So it was the fastest by a tenth over Daz and then two tenths over Ed Bars. Um, as we're, we're closing up on to these two now heading on to the back straight. This time we're getting a much better exit relative to these guys. But we're just too far behind, and I think maybe an opportunity will present itself if these two battle, if Ed tries to go for a lunge somewhere, but I think Ed will probably just take second, or at least that was my thought at the time. So, to be honest, P3 after signing P4 with Daz and Ed around me, I'll, I'll take that. So, um, that's a pretty decent result. Um, and with that, we jump into the pits, and now we've got our third heat of the day. This was heat 12 overall. And we're starting right behind a very, very quick driver. Probably the quickest driver in all of Club 100. Mr. Jack O'Neill, the Sprint 60 champion, the Endurance champion, the Sprint um, sprint, sprint 60 and Endurance champion from last year. But he hasn't done much sprints this year. This is his first round and we're starting from well down the order. I think we're starting in P11 for this race. So we just try to hold it nice and tight. We don't want to bump into anyone. There's a little bit of nudging as everyone kind of loads onto everyone. And we head down into turn two, and I just think, you know what, I'm going to take it tight, and look at that. The sea's just open for us as I try to squeeze my way through. I now move over to the inside, um, and I try to give the guy in front of me a bit of a push, so that he can work his way through the order as well, and I can follow as Jack kind of cuts across me. Um, but I'm able to get a, a switch back, and now I'm on the outside for this left hander, and I decide to, to hold it on the outside, and somehow... That actually works as um, someone's a little bit unhappy. I think that's uh, Mr. Christopher Powell. Um, as now we're into the double right hand, and we've been able to hold it around the outside. Little nudge on Mr. Green and Black Suit, but can't find a way through. I think I'm probably up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight from P11. That that's not bad considering how crazy the start of um, of this session was. I don't get the best of runs into this corner. I think I was under a bit of pressure, so I tried to take a, a defensive line into turn one. As everyone puts their hands up, what they put their hands up for, I don't know, because I didn't see a yellow flag. But I didn't want to be the guy who overtook under a yellow flag and then got black flagged. So I decided just to put my hand up as well and avoid it. Maybe, actually, that might be the greatest defensive technique ever. Just raise your hand when someone's about to overtake you and they'll think that there's a yellow flag. Um, maybe I'll try that at some point. Either way, we get a decent exit. I try to give the guy in front of me a bit of a push. I move to the inside, but there is already someone on my inside, and uh, we can't get a move done. I then try to look for a switchback, but that allows someone up my inside, which is uh, Jack O'Neill. So I spent too long getting through. I think if I'd got past these guys quickly, it would have been better than uh, Christopher uh, passes me as well. So I end up losing three positions. Bit of a bit of a moment. And I decide I'm going to go behind Jack. I'm going to give Jack a little pushy forward. Jack's going to go up the inside. I look for a nice um, late apex. I end up having to lift um, on the corner exit, so I don't get the position. And then I chuck one down the inside. Now I could have run Christopher off circuit, but I know Christopher somewhat, so I don't want to be I don't want to be that kind of guy. And then I get an absolute mega shunt into that corner. Christopher puts his hand up in. Uh, absolute frustration and uh, I've got to try to get past this guy who's actually defending his position as hard as he can which I thought was a bit of a well a bit of a dick move to be honest considering how he got the move done on me which was just smack into my rear end 
So with all of this, I should be right on the back of Christopher right now, but instead I've got to pass this this guy who um, I wasn't too pleased with. Maybe he didn't realize that it was, a, it was a bumper pass or maybe he thought I braked early or something. And then he tries to tell me to work forward a couple of laps later because I had a really bad uh, previous lap. We're closing in, we go up the inside and this time I just run him off track and I just say, you know what? get lost uh, I didn't care about you and I can try to work up to close back in on to Christopher Powell and whoever that is up ahead I think that might be Joshua Sang Sangster I'm not quite sure maybe it's Liam Nolan I don't know um, either way on to this mini straight then can we have a think up the inside I have a go but uh, I almost run into the back of him so I've got to smash the brakes on end up locking the rear losing a bit of time so yeah not the best of ways um, to climb through the field and I think I had a lot of pace in this race I got the fast lap at 55.3 it was um, a tenth quicker than uh, Christopher Powell Charlie Summers, Jack O'Neill who were all in the 55.4 so again I had the pace uh, but yeah I just couldn't, I couldn't make it work I think it might have been on the previous lap that I got that lap time as well it was lap 6 of the race so yeah it was on the lap just before this one or the one that we were just on Either way, we go up the inside of Liam, and with that, we make our way up into P8. But sadly for us, Christopher's just uh, way too far up the road. We take a defensive line into the double right hand just to make sure that we can't get sent. I think I probably had a look over my shoulder to make sure that um, I couldn't get sent into this hairpin. By the way, that's it. That is the race done and dusted. Um, we ended up finishing that race in P8 after starting P11, so... Not the best of runs. Sadly, we couldn't make the A final. We could only make the B final. But this meant that we get extra track time. And if we can finish in the top two, we end up in the A final nonetheless. So here we go then. We're starting in P2. Now, uh, I mean, if there's any experience club on under guys watching this, let me know. Because I think I get a really good start. I go on the throttle on the green lights. But then I realize that I've jumped the guy alongside. So I essentially fear that's a jump start. So I, I lift it out. Um, so I don't get a black flag and drop in behind Sam Slater um, Now I'm gonna be honest this video or oh, this race is very short because um, Not much happens in it now. I actually said oh Sam has a real moment with that rear end. He jams onto the brakes and uh, Completely locks those up um, What was I saying? Oh, yes, I Got the fastest lap of the day with one of my laps in the B final It did get beaten by Mike Coppin in the A final by three thousandths of a second the absolute person um he had to ruin my glory moment so i have included that lap at the end of this video but um, aside from that there's not much else in this b final to show so if you do want to see a hot lap at bayford meadows if you want to see what a 54.9 looks like in club on undercarts um make sure to stick around for the end to the end of this video either way though start of lap two we get a nice exit out of turn one sam he makes the uh, the mistake into turn one which is trying to carry speed into it which uh, always bites you in the backside. So we send up the inside of turn two and we are up into the lead of the race. Yay! And from that point, I just drove away like nobody's business. I ended up winning this race by 10 seconds. 10 seconds I won this race by. Over 14 laps, that's nearly a second a lap. And considering I only got past Sam on the second lap itself, um, yeah, I was absolutely chuffed with that. The pace was insane half a second quicker than pretty much most of the other drivers out on circuit so yeah i'll take that um but yeah with that now comes our a finals and we're starting right at the back so sam's on the outside we're on the inside although it feels like i'm starting behind but um, i guess everyone just hasn't closed up and to be honest i knew i was really quick i knew i'd got the fast session in three previous in three of my four sessions so far today so I knew I could get a good result but I had to be quick through traffic and for this one I do have you know what positions we're in and all of that so starting p25 in this race we take it nice and easy through turn one and just like that we're now going up the inside of someone into turn two tries to hang it around the outside but we just hold it tight all the way through and there's absolute chaos so we gain about four or five places just like that now we're on the outside into turn four uh, we might lose a position momentarily, but we're going to have the inside now into the right hairpin and um, Tim Penny has a, a bit of a moment, ends up going wide, so we hang it round the outside of this right-hander. Someone jumps ahead of us, um, but th that's fine. 
you know, we've kept it relatively clean. There's a bit of loading. Someone's pushing their way through. That's Tim Penny. So I just hug onto the inside just to make sure I get the position. I have a think about going up the inside into the second of the double right-handers, but that's never going to work. So I just slot back in, uh, in behind as we go into the final corner. A bit of a push. I got caught out by how early the braking was, and uh, we look to the inside. And with that, we move up into P17. So we've gained seven positions on the first lap we've gained another position already so i'd say that's a relatively good start as someone's come up our inside that's tim penny which is a uh, rather unfortunate that i've dropped that position uh, i cover off the inside just to any unwanting aggressors but now it's um head down and uh, try to climb through the field because i know how much pace i've got and uh, i know i can catch up to those guys up ahead essentially um, so through the long left-hander, actually one of the most fun corners on Bayford, that, that left-hander, you, you carry so much speed into it, you've got to um, just get the braking right, trail braking into that corner. By the way, you can see the amount of time we're gaining to the cars ahead as we go into the final corner, really closing on to Tim, and uh, we don't catch up a lot on this way, we actually lose a bit of time as Tim goes up the inside. We just take a very nice and clean turn one and we end up gaining a position. Now we could have a think about going up the inside of Tim, but he holds it somewhat defensively. We give him a, a nice cheeky push on the exit of the corner just so that we, we can work up. And Tim gives a sign of, uh, let's go and work to catch up with the guy's head. And I think, sure, but if I, if I get a decent run at you, I will take you because I know I can get through the traffic quicker than you is essentially my uh, mentality um, in this A-final as there's a whole bunch of people locking up and completely missing their apexes into this corner. And we're just losing a whole bunch of time, so we give Tim a push, he ends up going a wheel onto the grass. We can't go up the inside, that would be absolutely um, nuts. It would be thoroughly stupid to go up the inside into, into that right-hander as it is practically flat. Um, so we've just got to sit in behind again, so we're still in P17, a 55-1 on that lap. So actually a pretty decent lap time. Um, and would have been quicker if I didn't have to lift out to not hit the rear end of Tim So that actually might have been a 54 that lap So yeah, very quick lap and we got the inside of Tim as well as someone else and with that we are up into P15 so Yeah, decent decent double overtake and now we can try to work up to catch the guys up ahead. I think that's Reese Pope uh, Two positions in front of me. Oh, sorry three positions in front of me is in the blue helmet. So to be honest, right now I'm already on for my best A final result of the year, um, and I started at, and I started essentially from the B final. So, yeah, it's it's been good. This A final was a lot of fun as well. Heading into the final corner, then we get uh, again another really good exit. Uh, let's see what this. So this lap was a 55-1. Sorry, and that was with a double overtake. Um, for some reason, I thought the 55-1 was a previous lap. This lap is a 55-2. Um, very good exit out of turn one. Do we have to send down the inside? Of course we do. Um, nice and neatly done. We end up um, locking up a bit or sliding in, so we lose time on corner exit. That will cost us a tenth or so. But um, no, it's, it's decent, and I can see this long, long train of cars up ahead of me that goes all the way up to what I'm assuming is P5 or something. Yeah, so you can see your top three. And then from fourth down, it's just this long train of cards. So at this point, I was thinking, you know, I can I can easily get a top 10. We're one third of the way through this race. And yeah, I, I feel quick. So, so let's see how long it takes for me to catch up to these guys ahead. Considering that's, that must be like a two second gap or something. Um, so that last lap was a 55-2. This lap is a clear lap from me. And this is a, a 55-1. Um, so turn one, uh, I missed the apex a bit. So that's, I think that's a 10th there just try to carry it uh, just a bit too greedy on the brakes um, and that corner I get the apex but I feel like I bogged down a little bit when when I try to get the power on so uh, again carrying in too much speed miss the apex a little bit through through that hairpin and into the right hairpin this is where it feels really slow but you have to be slow just so that you have your car, car all the way to the right and you can get a good exit and uh, already we have closed in onto this group of carts or I want to say about half our deficit to them. We're up to P14 right now and um, so I'm not sure if there have been some incidents up ahead. I haven't seen any anyway as we go through the right hander nice and tidy and into the final corner. Use up all of the track on the exit and um, 
we are in this battle and this lap's a 56-0 so um, you can be assured that there is some battling we get a really good run out of turn one could have been a little bit better we have a thing to the inside decide against it does he go wide can we send it up the inside we can indeed and i can run him off the circuit no not quite his car is there so i have to decide against it we've got the outside now for this left hairpin and um well he essentially muscles us out and um, we lose a position and at this point i was thinking how can i get past well how about down the inside into this left hand i kind of park it on the apex so he can't get a switch back on me and uh with that we are up into P13 and now I can see Ed Bars and Reese Pope up ahead so Ed's probably got a, a pretty bad car if he's this far down the order considering he's a, a very quick driver and Ed started in, in P10 so he's, he's lost a few positions as well. Into the final corner, again another really good run uh, and that completes our 7th lap of the race. This lap is a bit quicker than that previous lap but again there's probably going to be some overtaking involved. Um, so are we close enough to White Helmet to have a send into this corner? No, we're not. He's actually going to go down the inside of Ed Bars. So I tried to follow through, but Ed can stick it around the outside. And now he's going to have the inside for this corner. So we try to go all the way around the outside, but Ed just um, takes the racing line, squeezes us out. So we have to swat him behind. And at this point, I just decide, OK, uh, let's just push Ed forward um, and try to catch up to this guy up, up ahead. I could have a look down the inside, but Ed has it covered. Uh, very nice stuff from it to um, have that one defended because I did think I was going to be able to squeeze up his inside um, But either way, yeah, we gain a lot on it through through the right-hander So I just decided to push him along because uh, I'm not going to be able to overtake him in into this sequence of corners uh, And yeah, you, you can see the amount we're, we're gaining on Ed. So either he doesn't have good acceleration or he doesn't have good top end uh, Yeah um, and we're gaining a fair bit. Ed actually squeezes me. I had to think about holding it in, but decided against it. Um, yeah, Ed, Ed was defending that position really, really hard. Um, otherwise, I could have been onto the back of that train of carts up ahead. So, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Ed's fully in his right to, to defend the position. But when, when you're driving, you're just thinking, ah, oh, you know, you want to get further and further up the road. This time we might be able to send Ed up the inside. No, not quite. Still too far back as Reese Pope drops a position. See whether we can get past Reese. Um, again, we get a good run, but no way through just yet. And we've got to hold on to P13. I can see Dante Dillon leading this train of carts. Um, so he must be in P4. Um, sorry, he's in P5, I think. Had to think about going up the inside, but Reese does it for me, and I can't quite follow him through. Um, and I'm going defensive, so someone must be right on my rear end. Um, and I'm just trying to find a way through at this point. Um, trying to attack while defending at the same time. But so far, no particular luck on that. It's been a really fun race. It was a really fun race. Probably my the most enjoyable race I've had in, had in sprint. Mainly because I was uh, rapid. But... Um, I've had some actually really fun races. I think one of the rounds in GYG where I finished third was really fun. Uh, a couple of the rounds here at Bayford were very fun. Um, Wilton, I think my first heat at Wilton was was pretty epic. Um, sadly, that one wasn't recorded though. Uh, we do have Wilton later in this championship, so that's something that I can do. Uh, Ed goes defensive, so I decide, you know what, I'm going up the inside. Sorry, Ed. Up the inside we go. We use up all of the track and... Um, I wonder if I go defensive into this corner. I don't really, so I was fairly comf confident that I was far enough ahead ahead of Ed to um, try to push forward. But now, lap 11 or 14, we're in P12. There's a, this huge gaggle of cars up ahead. Um, so we could gain like two, three places, but who knows. Uh, I'm not sure if at this point I've already got my penalty. Reese goes defensive, so we can't really follow him through. I think I should have just gone round the outside there. Uh, but again, I was kind of scared that Ed would be able to, to send me and gain a position. Um, yeah, I just couldn't find a way through on Reese um, at this point in the race. I don't think I get past him. I go a little bit wide into the final corner. And maybe if I didn't do that, I could have had a go. I get a penalty for what? I'm not too sure. So apparently I had like three warning contacts or something. And that gets me a penalty. I try to push Reese through on all of this, but he's not really able to go through a bit of a push. I try to get the exit, but I just bogged down, and now I've got to go defensive on Ed. 
Um, so it was just a case of like loads of people battling with each other and I couldn't really find a way through. I have a think about the inside, but Reese covers that one off. Um, now I think about block pass up the inside into the left hander, but again, too far back. And now I lose all of this time on the straight as well. So I was just kind of desperately searching for, for a way through, but was unable to find it really. Um, I definitely had the pace to finish inside the top 10. I think maybe if I do this race again, I can get a top 10, but um, all things considered, considering I started down in, what was it, P25? Uh, pretty decent result, to be fair. Um, and now this is my fast lap of this race, 55-0. Um, and considering how far back we were from Reese heading into this lap, but let's see how much, how much we do gain. Because this was the third fastest lap of the session. Sorry, the fourth. The leaders all did uh, 55 zeros, apart from Mike Coppin, who did a 54.9. And then I was um, the next quickest. Oh, sorry, apparently um, there was one other who did a 55 zero. But there were a lot of 55 zeros in this particular session. Um, either way, we were within a tenth of the fastest lap. So, yeah, we were right there. Either way, then, through this uh, double right-hander, we're still gaining. We haven't gained by a huge amount. The guys ahead are putting in a pretty quick lap time uh, into the final corner. Again, a decent run, but yeah, we're just too far back from from Reese. And he has a little look over his shoulder just to see if if I'm there, so he knows if he has to defend or if he can go fully on the offensive. And I think he should go on the offensive because there is a very large gap between us. Um, also, maybe I should have cut this video. I remember it being having a lot more action towards the end, but I guess this was just me trying to um, catch back up to Reese after doing a bit of a stupid, um, trying to go for a move where there wasn't one and then having to find the time all over again. Um, so it's a shame. Either way, we had really good pace here today and um, yeah, can't actually complain with it because it was, it was a really good day at Bayford very hot very sunny we've got lid coming up next in the championship which from the time that i'm doing this uh, voiceover is in one week's time so hopefully i'll get the um the footage from that edited and uploaded much quicker um i think i prefer this format where i just have like one race with with the times but with that um yeah that is everything so make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video um and now this is the bit that maybe some of you have been waiting for which is my fastest lap from the B final, which was a 54.9. So let's um, let's head into this. So this is um, coming towards the end of the lap, starting up my my fastest lap. And this B final was just me um, practicing. Uh, well, it was it was a effectively a, glor a glorified practice session. I don't think I had a rocket because I think I was at this pace in the A final as well. And in another heat, I had a 55 too. So let's go through this lap then. So turn one. You want to use up all of the track. Never slide into turn one. Just be nice and smooth, which is exactly what we do there. Nice late apex and then into turn two. Jam on the brakes. We're sliding and it's all about carrying as much speed. So not letting your minimum speed drop and then you use that curb on the left. Into, into this left hairpin. Nice early apex. Let the cart out. Use up all of the track. Pull it back to the left and then slow it right down. Get the cart all the way to the right. Nice early apex. You don't have to use that curbing. Maybe there was a bit more time if I did use it into this long left hand. And it's all about trail braking again, early on the power. Cut doesn't have to be all the way to the left, but fairly far to the left. And we hold it flat all the way through those two right handers and probably flat through here as well. Yeah, so just a little flick, get a little slide, jump onto the brakes into the final corner, back on the power nice and early, and then just carry the speed all the way down. And that is a 54.9 at Bayford Meadows.